In the past, you'd expect any Volvo estate to be substantial, comfortable, safe, reliable, but also not massively desirable or enjoyable to drive. But this is a manufacturer that is still benefiting from a massive reinvention under new owners since 2010. And the Volvo V60 is the biggest example of that. They've transformed the previous model from a not so pretty also ran into this beautifully sleek Scandinavian wagon. And in this video review, we're gonna tell you everything that you need to know about the new V60, including whether it should be on your estate car shopping list. And if you wanna buy a V60, any new Volvo, or any new car that's on sale, then go to whatcar.com and look at the new car buying section when you're there to see how much money we could save you on your next new car without the need for any awkward haggling. Being an estate, one of the most important things about the V60 is its boot. So let's start there. Well, every model gets an electrically powered tailgate as standard. And inside, with the rear seats up, you get 529 litres of space. But what does that mean? Well, translated into practical terms, it means that you can fit more carry-on size suitcases in the boot here than you can in an Audi A4 Avant. But both of those boots are dwarfed by the absolutely enormous Skoda Superb estate. Even though the Skoda's boot is bigger, the V60's is in some ways more practical. That's because the V60 has some practical features like a flat load bay with no lip at the front and also this netted area to help with storage. And if you add the convenience pack for 500 pounds, which this car gets, then you can flatten the rear seats electrically just with these buttons at the back. And you can see once they're down, the load space is massive. Just imagine the amount of flat pack IKEA furniture you can fit in the back of that. You also get this load base separator, which pops up here and has these hooks that's pretty helpful for your shopping bags. And finally, with the convenience pack, you get this 12 volt socket in the back here. So that's the boot. It's very practical and impressive. But what about the space inside? In the back, even tall adults will have plenty of room and won't be complaining about sitting back here. So legroom is what's most impressive about it. You get substantially more space than you do in an A4 Avant, a Mercedes C-Class Estate, and even a BMW 3 Series Touring. Another helpful feature in the back of the V60 is underneath this here, you get a three pin plug. Up front, space, again, very impressive. But just bear in mind that if you do go for the optional panoramic sunroof, then it does cut into a fair chunk of headroom. Having said that though, you'd have to be a proper giant for that to be an issue. Storage, well, generally very impressive. There's some compartments in the center console here that are all usefully sized and very helpful. A couple of cup holders as well. The glove box is a good size. The only disappointing thing is that the door bins are actually pretty small. So the V60 impresses with its practicality, but actually the real jewel in its crown is its interior up front here. Now Volvo has been making quite a name for itself with its interior designs of late, and the V60 is certainly no exception to that. There's lovely features throughout, like the knurling on the starter button and even on the air vents. Plus on the driver's seat, you have this Swedish flag here that's a helpful reminder that you're not just sat in another German car. And in a similar vein to that, outside you have the Hammer of Thor headlights, which are becoming quite a typical Volvo design cue. But back inside here, this is all very nice, but it can get even more plush than what we're in now. So we've got a fairly modestly spec Momentum Pro model. And even on that level of trim, the materials are absolutely top notch and it's brilliantly put together. Inscription and all Pro models get electrically adjustable seats as standard, and there's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel as well. The pedals are perfectly lined up, which actually isn't something you can say of its German rivals. With them, a lot of the pedals are offset awkwardly to the right, or there's a bulge in the transmission tunnel on the left. So the Volvo V60 has neither of those problems and it's a brilliant driving position. As for visibility, these thin pillars at the front here and at the back means there's no problem with the view out. Rear parking sensors are standard, plus you get front sensors, a reversing camera, and 360 degree camera as well. Now, if there is one bad thing about the interior, it's the infotainment system. But let's talk about the good things first. So it's a nine inch tablet style touchscreen. So it's basically a smaller version of what you find on Tesla interiors. And it comes loaded with features. So you get sat nav, DAB radio, and the graphics are really crisp, really clear. Even though you have some steering wheel controls and a volume dial at the bottom of the screen, it's just not as simple to operate on the move as rival systems that have a rotary dial controller on the centre console. So, for that reason, iDrive still leads the way in this class. But what's it like to drive? 
Well, let's talk about the engines first. So there are two two litre diesel engines to choose from. There's a 148 brake horsepower D3 and a 187 brake horsepower D4. And along with that, you've got a 247 brake horsepower turbocharged petrol called the T5. There's also a plug-in hybrid version on its way. We would say that it's the diesel engines that suit the car best though. The D4 is quick, although not quite as quick as a Mercedes C220D Estate or an A4 Avant 2 litre TDI 190. But when you're not trying to win a drag race against those two cars, you'll find the pace pretty sufficient. It's the car we're driving here and it pulls nicely from low revs, gets up to motorway speeds fine and will manage long journeys without any fuss. The D3 by comparison, as you'd imagine, isn't quite as brisk because it's down on power, but again, it's still a decent engine that will do long journeys without much stress, pulls nicely from low revs. However, there isn't much to separate the two engines on price or economy. And so because of that, we'd stick with the D4 because you get a bit of extra power for your money. Now, the eight-speed automatic gearbox is actually a bit of an Achilles heel for the V60. If you ask for a quick burst of acceleration, really tends to dither with its shifts and hesitate especially during kickdown. There is a six-speed manual alternative but the gear shift is pretty notchy and there's not much feel in the clutch pedal either so that means that it's difficult to find the bite point. So we'd stick with the auto but it's still not quite as slick, smooth and quick as its Mercedes or BMW rivals. In terms of noise, Audi's four-cylinder diesel engines still lead the way for quietness, but the V60's D4 isn't too grumbly. It's pretty quiet, and when you're on the motorway, the engine noise does manage to fade into a background hum that you don't really notice. And the ride strikes a happy balance, as long as you pick the right wheels and suspension. So, on standard suspension with 17-inch or 18-inch alloys, the ride is pretty impressive. Body movement is kept tightly in check over small lumps and bumps on the road, and it's still good if you hit the harsher stuff too. The good news is it handles pretty tidily. Admittedly, not quite so good as an A4 Avant, but the V60 steers accurately, and there's plenty of grip. Mind you, if you want something that will properly put a smile on your face, then you'll probably want to wait for the new BMW 3 Series Touring. However, choose bigger wheels, particularly 19s, and adaptive suspension, and the V60's character changes for the worse. In comfort mode, the car wallows over big undulations and tends to crash over larger intrusions, such as speed bumps. Switch to dynamic mode, and things become too firm for the majority of British roads. Generally, like for like, if you're buying in cash, the V60 is no pricier than its Mercedes, BMW, and Audi rivals. And the Volvo comes stacked with equipment. If you prefer monthly finance deals, then the Volvo remains very competitive. And it's the same story if you choose to run it as a company car. As for the trims, entry-level momentum represents the best value because it covers all the basics and throws in a few luxuries as well. So we'd recommend sticking with that, but maybe adding a few options, like the convenience pack, which we mentioned earlier. The V60 lives up to Volvo's brilliant reputation for safety and received the maximum five-star safety rating from Euro NCAP coming with loads of impressive safety equipment, more, in fact, than many of its rivals get as standard. Automatic emergency braking that can detect cars, pedestrians and large animals, traffic sign recognition and oncoming lane mitigation to help avoid a head-on collision all comes as standard. The only negative here is Volvo's reliability record. In our latest reliability survey, Volvo finished 25th out of 31 manufacturers, behind all of its main rivals but you still get a three year, 60,000 mile warranty and free breakdown cover as standard. So the V60 continues Volvo's recent run of impressive new cars. Pick the right wheels and suspension and it's comfortable and good to drive with a massive interior that's beautifully put together. If your budget can stretch to these cars in the premium part of the market, the V60 should definitely be on your list. For much more on the Volvo V60, including our extended review of it and all of its key rivals, head to whatcar.com. And if you want to buy a V60 or any other new car, then go to the new car buying section while you're there to see how much money we could save you online straight away without the need for any haggling. And if you've enjoyed this review, give us a like and subscribe to the What Car YouTube channel to keep up to speed with the latest new car reviews.